So in this question we have three numbers, x, y, and z, and we know their relative order. We also know that they're all greater than 1, and it looks like our job is to pick the greatest answer choice. But what's interesting about this question and these answer choices is that it seems like no matter which specific values we get for z, y, and x, as long as z is greater than y is greater than x is greater than 1, the same exact answer choice will always be greatest. Now we can use that to our advantage. We could just grab any old numbers. I mean, I'd take z is 4, y is 3, and x is 2, plug those into the five answer choices and see which one is biggest. So this strategy got us to the right answer, and we could certainly do it in under two minutes, so it's okay. It's, it's a great strategy for the test center, but if I use that strategy at home, I feel like I didn't really learn anything from this question. In terms of my quantitative reasoning, I'm the same person I was before I tried it. I didn't grow as a person when it comes to quantitative reasoning. So let's look at a more reasoning-based approach right after the intro. So I think in order to reason through this question, it might be useful to pretend that we're playing a game. In this game, you get three different numbers, they're all greater than one, and the rules of the game are that you have to pick two numbers of the three numbers that you were given, you have to pick two of them, add them together, and then multiply that sum by the third number. Now the object of the game is to maximize the value that you get out of those operations. Now what if I told you that you're allowed to replace one of those numbers with a number 1? Remember, all three numbers that you're given are greater than 1. Would you ever want to replace one of them with 1? No, of course not. That wouldn't maximize your value. Uh, so we can eliminate answer choices A and B just based on that reasoning. I would never want to replace one of my numbers with a number 1 in this game. Now as we think about a strategy that will help us win this game, do you feel intuitively that you'd be better off keeping the biggest number for the multiplication part? Right? Add the two smaller numbers and then multiply that sum times the biggest number? Let me know in the comments below if your intuition is pointing you in that direction, because if so, you're right. The thing is that when you multiply that biggest number by the sum of the two smaller numbers, essentially you get to use the value of that biggest number twice, right? Each of the smaller numbers in the sum gets multiplied by that bigger number, whereas if you kind of waste that bigger number inside the sum, then you're only getting the value out of it once. So I'm curious how many people would intuitively sense that it would make most sense to keep that big number for the multiplication part, which of course is answer choice E. Let me know in the comments below if you do or don't have that intuition, just because I'm curious to find out. I'll see you in the next one. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.